Okay, so hi everyone. So uh, I'm thinking of making this uh, video as a LinkedIn uh, worksheet uh, walkthrough. So when I'm creating the lab nine, I understand that uh, many of you all are struggling with the uh, calculations. So unfortunately, not many of you all reached out to me as well uh, to get some help. Uh, so since this is the last worksheet, I don't want you all to like suffer and like struggle and um, have a very low grade for this as well. So please try to uh, review this video and uh, try to... Uh, complete the worksheet as much as possible. If you need any help, reach out to me via email uh, or tomorrow also I'll be holding my office hours uh, usual time. Um, so let's see. All right, so this uh, worksheet has five questions. The first question is asking, uh, this is related to the activity one. So you're going to complete this based on the activity one. Uh, so uh, I have just kind of um, used some examples, uh, numbers. So you will be getting something like this. Uh, for each trial, uh, some temperature readings. And then what you have to do is, um, so in the second question, they are saying uh, generate the plot. So they tell what you want to, what we want you all to plot it. So plot the water temperature in the y-axis and the time in the x-axis. So for each trial, you will plot it. So time, this is time 1 to 10 would be in x and then each temperature would be on the y-axis. So likewise, you will be getting 3 uh graphs so you have to title it properly which one is which trial some people like overlay them that's also fine uh and then you have to have the uh axis labeled and units right some of you all just put like minutes as the x-axis it's not the title right it's not the label of the axis the label should be time unit should be minutes and then you have to have the equation, R square values displayed. And some people have given me like a, a equation for decimal places, like 10 decimal places. That is also again incorrect. Like you have to kind of uh, show it in the either in the scientific notation or like maybe like four decimal places maximum. All right. So that's there. Now, next, what you have is, so first, in the data table 1B, they're asking initial temperature. So you know what is what was your initial temperature of the cold water, then the initial temperature of the hot water, then the temperature at time zero from graph. Okay, so if you did it correctly in the lab nine, no problem. This is for those who didn't do it rightly. So this should be the y-intercept. So for trial one, the intercept value is this constant. So in the equation, whatever this number you get. So for the trial two, I have this number. For the trial three, I have this number, right? So that is the value you're going to give here. All right. So many people got didn't get this correct in the lab nine. Let's see how to do this. So they're telling you, so delta Q hot water is equal to the mass of hot water. So what was the mass they're asking us to do? Let's go and see. Leptin, manual. Let's go to the activity one. All right. How much? Okay, so this time it is, uh, they are asking only to take two milliliters. So two milliliters convert into grams. So if one milliliter, so we are giving you the density, one milliliter is one gram, then how much is two milliliters? So for this, over here, what you have to do is the mass of the uh, water, how much? So you use two milliliters. So you have to convert the two milliliters, multiply by the density. then you will be getting the mass of the hot water. Then the CP of the hot water. So in uh, the lab nine also I explained whether it is hot or cold, the heat capacity gonna be the same. So 4.18, so you multiply this. So the, the CP, so I'm first putting all the uh, constant or the values for each. So you know what to uh, what are the values, then you have to multiply each of them. Now Delta T of hot water. So what was the final value? So final value is the value that you get here from the intercept. 
So if I look at it, it should be my case just is 33. All right. So then uh, delta T is equal to final minus initial. So final is 33 minus initial hot water is 76. So that's what should be here. So those are the numbers that you will be plugging to this equation and calculate the heat cap mass, heat change for the hot water. Similarly, heat gained by cold water. So here what's going to happen? So now mass of the cold water. So what is the mass uh, for the cold water? How much of mass is uh, did you take? Um, again, 2 milliliters. Sorry, so the previous one was for the room temperature or the cold water. So hot water is also 2 milliliters. So we are only asking you all to take 2 milliliters. So again, you do the this math and calculate the mass in grams and then cp is the same 4.18 and then the delta t or the temperature change is going to be equal to so again the final temperature is 33 and initial is 21 for this case so then you multiply all this now what they're asking heat gained by the calorie meter so that is equal to the hot water plus cold water so basically whatever the value you are getting in this cell plus this value you're getting in this box. So you add them, then that's the value, right? Because that is, you already have figured out, right? So it's, we are doing it step by step. You first found the delta Q hot water, then delta Q cold water. Why? Because you want to calculate the delta Q calorie meter. All right, now you have the heat change of the calorie meter. Now you're going to calculate the temperature change of the calorie meter. So for that, you again going to do is the initial uh, final water mixture. So you're going to do an assumption. You're thinking or you're assuming whatever the water's temperature is going to be equal to the calorie meter. So then the final water mixture is again 33 and you had cold water in that. So that is going to be your initial calorie meter temperature. So again, so this is the temperature change then. So you get the temperature change. Now you have uh, calculate the um, heat change over here. You have the temperature change. So the next line is asking you to divide each of them, right? So you have the heat change over the temperature change, which will give you the C calorie meter in joules, right? And then you will be having three values, trial one, trial two, trial three, then get the average. So that will be the calorie meter capacity, right? The heat capacity, heat average heat capacity of the calorie meter. That's all you have to do. So then the part B is straightforward. You should be able to do. Now the activity two. What is the activity two telling you to do? Again, you're going to take this, uh, the magnesium, right? The magnesium stripe. So whatever the value uh, amount they are asking, try to take. And then you measure uh, the temperature of the HCL. You put it here. And then uh, when, when the reaction starts, you measure the temperature uh, likewise, right? And then again, uh, you are going to plot it. So again, we are telling you what should be in each of the axis. The water's temperature should be on the y-axis and time in x-axis. So you will be seeing a graph like this, a plot, right? So this is temperature versus time. And um, so again, the temperature is going down. So many people collect the data correctly. But when they plot, the temperature, the line would be on the opposite direction. You have to like think, is that what I should see? With the temperature, my temp sorry, with the time, my temperature is going down. So am I seeing it correctly in the plot, in the Excel sheet that you did? Okay, so once you have that Excel sheet, so you can write the trend line equation and then you have can find the final temperature of the solution also, it's the same way, the intercept or this constant value of this equation is the answer. Then now you know how to get the solutions temperature change, right? The final solution would be this. So here we are telling, so whatever the final temperature is, is the intercept. And now you have that, 
then it minus the initial HCl solution temperature. Now you have to cal calculate the M solution, the mass of the solution, right? So um, what would be the mass of the solution here? It's the combination now, the hot water plus, uh, sorry, the HCl basically. Uh, you can ignore that the magnesium is not going to uh, add anything. So you can see for activity two, how much of uh, HCl we are adding. Okay, so we are adding four milliliters. So, um, yeah, so you can use that and you can assume that uh, it's going to be the, um, yeah, so even they're telling it's the solution um, heat capacity is also, you can assume that's going to be the water and density is also the same. So then calculate the mass. So you know the mass, then the CP solution, even though it's HCl, you can assume it's as water. You have the delta T calculated in the previous one and you can calculate then the delta Q. Then here, the delta Q of the calorimeter. Right, so that is going to be equal to the C calorie meter. So C calorie meter, where are you going to get that C calorie meter from? C calorie meter is coming from the activity one table. That's why you're doing this whole activity one, right? So to find the C calorie meter, many people didn't catch that in their lab nine, right? So you have to use this value in the table one last row value in here. So the C calorie meter times delta T of the solution. Now, heat of reaction one is going to be equal to the uh, addition of these two. All right. So then you should be, you know, you have calculated the reaction one heat change, uh, the enthalpy change. Next, they're asking, uh, what is this? Is it endothermic or exothermic? So you have to go to the lab manual and see based on the sign. So the signs are very important. You see that there's a negative value here. And when you're calculating delta T, always the final minus initial, then only you will getting the, the sign of this value correctly. So that is really important. So this delta H reaction, whether it's negative or positive, based on that, you should be able to tell whether it's exothermic or endothermic, right? So that part is clearly in the manual, right? Even we are telling you where it is in, right? So you have to put some effort to read that and then justify why. Then the last activity, the activity three, right? So here what we are asking is, so mass of magnesium oxide. So you are again uh, going to report that value and it's CL initial. And now again, you're doing the same thing. So same graph, like a similar graph and all the calculations are gonna be the same. Now you're going to get that. Again, now you have to think, is reaction two as listed on page four, exothermic or endothermic? And then again, uh, the part B, consider the equation for delta H reaction and delta X reaction two. Why does the equation of delta X reaction employ a negative sign? While the one for delta H reaction does not. Okay, what does they are telling? Over here, do you see? So delta H reaction two is equal to minus this part. But in the previous one, you didn't have that. You just have the delta H reaction is equal to the solution plus the calorie meter. So they're asking why. So you had to go to the manual and see what is the reaction in the manual plus what is the reaction you are actually doing. Is it the same direction? If the direction is changing, then you should have a negative sign. For an example, let's go to the reaction two. Let's see what is the reaction. Um, okay, so the reaction one, yeah, so this is the reaction two. Think, is this the reaction you are doing? Are you putting magnesium ions to the water? Or are you using magnesium solid, magnesium oxide solid with XCL? Which way is this reaction is happening? Is it the forward reaction is happening or the backward reaction is happening? Based on that, you should be able to write. And also you have uh, the answer here. So read this thoroughly and try to understand the uh, answer for that part. All right. And then the question four. Now that you have delta reaction, sorry. So the enthalpy change for reaction one 
and enthalpy change for reaction 2. They are in joules. Convert each of these quantities for kilojoules per mole. Okay. So do it step by if it's difficult for you to at once understand what's happening. So can you do from joules to kilojoules? It's like meters to kilometers. What's the uh, relationship? So we know 1000 joules is equal to 1 kilojoule. Then if you have whatever this in the delta H, the enthalpy for the reaction 1, you will be having a value in joules. What you have to do to convert that into kilojoules. All right. So do the unit conversion. Now you have them in the kilojoules. And that many of things happen for how many moles? Now you are each time you're measure, uh, mentioning the mass, right? In this, in the data table three, you're mentioning the magnesium oxide mass. In the data table two, you're mentioning the magnesium's mass. Why are you mentioning that? Because now you have to calculate the moles. So mass of magnesium, 0 0.06 gram. Then moles of magnesium, how much? So you have to mass over molar mass, right, of magnesium. Do that and you will be getting the moles. So you have to technically divide the kilojoules by that number of moles. Then you will be getting per mole. So that's how you would do the unit conversion. And we are even telling you, so molar mass is 24.31 for the magnesium. So you will um, divide that, the whole thing, the number of moles, whatever you are getting this value, right? So let's say you're getting X moles. So then you have Y amount of kilojoules and divide that by X moles. So that's how you would get the answer. So that is for the reaction one and do the same thing for the reaction two, where you have to take the mass of magnesium oxide and moles of magnesium oxide, then you convert. Then finally, the question five. So they are telling, so this is again going back to why are we doing this? The whole point of doing this uh, exercise or the experiment is to find the overall enthalpy change. So overall enthalpy change is equal to addition of individual reactions. So this is going to happen in stepwise three reactions. So we have delta H for the reaction one, delta H for the reaction two. We are not doing the delta H reaction three. That's why the question is giving you, assume that delta H reaction three is this, then how you would calculate the delta H overall. So that is again from the manual. So if you clearly read this manual, I don't see why you cannot complete this, but still, if you need extra help, so that's the reason why I'm making this video. So please seek for help, right? At the end, when you're submitting, if you just say like, oh, I couldn't do it, this is the maximum I could do. So that is, uh, I cannot help you at that point, right? But if you seek for help earlier, I definitely can help you. We can go through, do one -on one session, Somehow I can help you to boost your grades. All right. Good luck. So this is our last final uh, assignment. So I think uh, you all enjoyed the course. Um, and good luck with uh, all the rest of your, all the coursework for the semester. Bye.